So Sale ends tomorrow, though. Did you say that? Yeah, we'll get that. Do you need both of them? So we're making sure we have the correct form. That means that it goes x squared, x number. You're making sure that everything's on one side. You need to have a zero somewhere on one side of the equation if you use quadratic formula. You have to have a zero. If not, it's not going to work. Next thing, should you ever plug in fractions to your quadratic formula? No. <laughs> never. Oh, never. Never. That, that'd be ridiculous. You have an equation here, get rid of your fractions first. Otherwise, it makes it way too hard. So in our case, we are trying to get rid of fractions. This is chapter 7 stuff. What are you going to multiply by to get rid of your fractions? Good. So here, multiply by 8. And here by 8. How about the 2? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here? Yes. Yeah, technically yes. Now, fortunately for us, that's a 0. 0 times anything is 0, not 8. So we have 0 on one side of our equation. Here you get nicely x squared minus 2x minus 16 gives you 0. How many people were able to make it that far? Good for you. Now, in normal situations, well, well this is of course the quadratic formula section, so you're probably going to be using that. But most of the time, you're going to check to see if you can factor that. You would check that. You'd have negative 2 on the top, negative 16 on the bottom. I'm not seeing anything that I can factor out of that to use for adding to negative 2 and multiplying to negative 16. I don't see it. Uh, but I'd try for 10 seconds. Okay? If you can't do it, then you move on to quadratic formula. A is b is negative 2, and c is negative 16. Did you make it that far, folks? Mm -hmm. Good deal. Now we're going to plug it in appropriately. We're going to have x equals negative, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 in parentheses squared, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. Check your work against my work. Do you have exactly that on your paper? Hopefully we both did it right. So negative negative 2, well that's 2. Plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared is positive 4 minus, you're going to do 4 times 16, that gives you 64. All over 2. Raise your hand if you made it that far. What? Okay. I hope not. I hope not. That far? Okay. With parentheses? Yes. Fantastic. It's even better. You just automatically raise your hand, don't you now? <laughs> 4 minus negative 64, is it true? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's going to give us 2 plus or minus the square root of how much is inside my print, my uh, radical? 16. Can I break up, can I simplify the square root of 68? Yep, 4 and 17. 4 and So you, you try to divide by a perfect square, the only one that works here is 4. So you're going to do the 4 times the 17, or you're going to get 2 root 17. Did you get 2 root 17? Yes. If not, well, work on your simplification. If you made it this far, you should be able to make it down to the simplification. So this is 2 plus or minus 2 root 17 over 2. Right side of the room, can you go any further? Yes. What can you do? Factor how much? 
notice, please watch them here. What you can't do, this is one of the most common mistakes. I see in calculus. What you can't do, if you're not watching, you're going to make this mistake. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's connected by addition and subtraction. It's a double whammy. You're, you're double messing this up. And two negatives don't make it right here. Okay? <laughs> yeah, you, you can't do this at all. Factor the two out? You have to factor. In order to simplify, you have to factor. Have to. Can't cross these twos out either. Maybe by the subtraction. So you have to do 1 plus or minus the square root of 17. Notice the difference. Now, that's being multiplied by the entire expression. That's what you can simplify. Those are now gone. What's on the denominator of a fraction? Do you need to write the 1? No. Not really. You've got 1 plus the square root of 17. You've got 1 minus the square root of 17. And that's as good as you can do. Would you raise your hand feel okay with this problem? Now I'm going to take a moment right now to talk about what we're doing. Because a lot of times people can do the math, they just don't understand exactly what we are doing here. What you're doing when you're finding these two solutions, you're identifying part of a graph. Do you understand what type of graph an x squared makes? Parabola. Do you remember the parabola? The U-shaped graph? What you're doing when you're finding this, when you're finding these two solutions, you're finding out where that graph crosses the x-axis. Where that graph crosses the x-axis. So, the options you have are you can, how many spots are you normally going to cross the x-axis at with the parabola? Well, if you go down, you have to come up somewhere, right? And it's not going to go back down. It's going to go up. Or if you're upside down, you're going to cross the two spots. That's what you're doing when you're finding two solutions. You're finding where, according to the x-axis, you're crossing. Here and here. Or here and here. Are you with me on that? Now, there are a couple more options. Could you not cross at all? That doesn't cross at all. Yet, we're still going to get two solutions. However, you know what's going to happen? I hope you listen here. You're going to get complex numbers. Complex numbers means you don't cross at all. It means you have two solutions. There's not real solutions. This would be two real solutions. This would be two complex solutions. Or that one. Is there ever a case where you can get one? One solution would be you cross it, but you don't come back up. Is that possible? But is there another case? Is there another option for you? Not a side. You can't do that. It's not a function. Can you possibly touch this at one point? What if this is resting right on it? Does that hit it at one point? Or upside down? Therefore, you have three options. You have the option where you cross it twice. Those are two reels. You have the option where you don't cross it at all. Two complex. You also have the option where you touch it at one spot, the vertex is on that graph. This is called a double root. It's technically two real roots, they just happen at the same point. So we're going to say this is one real. Now we're going to talk about the discriminant and what gives you these things. So look up at the discriminant. Hey, if this is, look at the board with me please. If this is positive, that means you're adding and subtracting some number, some real number. You with me? Some real number. If you add and subtract a real number, you're going to get plus and minus a real number. That gives you two real solutions. These things are real solutions. Follow? If this is negative, What's the square root of a negative number? What's it going to give you? I. Square root of a negative is I. That's going to give you two complex solutions. You'd be adding and subtracting the complex. That would be this case. What's the only time you can get one solution? How much would this have to be? Remember, if you add and subtract a real, you get two reals. If you add and subtract a complex, you get two complex. What does this have to be to add and subtract it and still get only one thing? Say it again. I heard someone say it. Zero. If you add and subtract nothing, you're just going to get one number. 
you're going to get just B, negative B over 2A. That would be your one solution. If, you, if this happens to be a zero, it does happen from time to time. Now we're going to talk about one more example, this one. I'll show you what to do with it. We'll talk about how to apply it to one instance and that'll be our section. So first thing, what would you have to do here? If I get everything on one side, that's either this, look at the board, either subtracting X, but you're going to have to deal with all negatives. That's going to suck. And other, otherwise, you can these over here, add them. So add 4X squared and add 4 to both sides. You're going to get 4X squared plus X plus 4 equals 0. Do you see why I put it in this order? Mm -hmm. You've got to have it in that correct order. So 4x squared plus x and then plus 4. How much is your a? 4. b? 1. c? 4. Well, I could do that. x equals negative plus or minus radical b squared minus 4a c all divided by 2. Hey. Hey. Do you see where those numbers are coming from? Hey, you got the song. How about that? Are you okay on getting that? This should be kind of a routine at this point. Plug them in correctly. I just need you to see what happens on this one example. You're going to get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared gives you 1 minus 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. All over 8. Hey, tell me something, ladies and gentlemen. On the inside of my radical, can you tell me what I have? Negative 63. Wait, 63? Did you say 63? Negative. Did you say negative 63? Is it going to make a difference? Forget about it.